Haunted in America Written by Leslie Rule Volume 1 The man with the blue hand Peggy Bailey woke to a terrified shriek. A devoted mother, she leapt out of bed and rushed toward her children's bedrooms. Little Caleb sat in his bed, tears coursing down his chubby cheeks. What's the matter? Honey Peggy cried as she ran to him. She held the trembling two-year-old in her arms. Everything is okay. Mommy's here. She soothed the nightmare. What else could it be? Caleb was probably upset about sleeping in a new place. She told herself. The single mom and her mother had recently moved to the rented house in Chilton, Wisconsin. Five-year-old Caitlin was excited about the adventure, but Caleb seemed frightened. The old five-bedroom farmhouse was close to her work, and she was happy to have found it. The children each had their own rooms with plenty of space for their toys. Peggy had figured her little boy might be uneasy about sleeping alone for the first time, so she tried to make it as special as possible. She tucked him in with his favorite stuffed animals and told him he was a big boy with his own room now. But night after night, the family awoke to Caleb's cries. He began to talk about a man confided Peggy. He talked about the man in his room or the man on his bed. Most often, he talked about the man with the blue hand. It got to the point where he would not even go in his own bedroom. Meanwhile, Caitlin was happy about the new place and cheerfully lined her dolls up on a shelf in her room. No one else seemed to sense anything except for the Baileys. Two dogs, they frequently ran through the house growling and barking for no reason, said Peggy, and they refused to enter Caleb's room too purdy. The smart poodle terrier mix was especially disturbed by the unknown presence. Peggy watched concerned as the little dog bared her teeth and snarled at thin air. She had read that animals are sensitive to haunted places, and she found herself wondering if her little boy could be seeing something from the other side, something that the protective Purdy also sensed. One day my mother went upstairs to get Caleb some clothes from his room, said Peggy. He followed her up and stood outside the door and pointed to the corner. The little boy asked his grandmother, do you see him? His eyes were huge and frightened, pleading with his grandma to see and understand he did the same thing with me, Peggy added, describing how the toddler would stand and point a trembling finger. The adults could only stare at the empty corner. Was there really a man there? If so, who was he? Why was his hand? Blue Peggy? Did her best to listen to Caleb, when he talked about the man, even as she reassured him, she did not want to dismiss his fears. What if there was someone there? She did not want to make her child feel worse by alienating him. She tried to strike a fine balance between not feeding the fear and supporting her belief in Caleb. Things got worse. Barely a night passed. When the family slept without interruptions, the toddlers... Midnight screams became part of the routine. Peggy did her best to comfort her child, but it scared her to see him so frightened that his little body shook. Finally, Caleb refused to enter the house when they returned from the grocery store, and Peggy knew she had to act. I phoned the minister from the church I attended when I was twelve, she said. I thought of him because he was an enormous man. Six feet five. I was scared, and I wanted someone big. Her minister put her in touch with another minister who lived in her area. His name was Leon. He and a deacon from his church met with us. Things got worse. Barely a night passed. When the family slept without interruptions, the toddlers. Midnight screams became part of the routine. Peggy did her best to comfort her child but it scared her to see him so frightened that his little body shook. Finally, 
Caleb refused to enter the house when they returned from the grocery store, and Peggy knew she had to act. I phoned the minister from the church I attended when I was twelve, she said. I thought of him because he was an enormous man. Six feet five. I was scared, and I wanted someone big. Her minister put her in touch with another minister who lived in her area. His name was Leon. He and a deacon from his church met with us. 